Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. It is now Friday, the 12th of July, 2024. Thank you for tuning in. we got a little bit to talk about today. The Saharan air kind of dominating things. We're just in a quiet period, it seems, for the next week to 10 days at least. We'll also take a look at what's happening with the Houston and surrounding area power outage situation. Quite unfortunate what took place there in the wake of Beryl. And we're going to start off, though, with some history for you. All right. 28 years ago today, Bertha, Hurricane Bertha made landfall right here in southeast North Carolina where I am. And it was the first time that I went out and professionally, I guess that's the way to put it, uh, studied a hurricane right here in my own backyard. Here is the picture that was taken of me from the Winston-Salem Journal photographer, that is a Davis anemometer. There's the Davis little computer in my hand. All the wires with it. There's a little 9-volt battery in there. Not the best way to get wind, but I figured all these reporters are out and they're telling us how windy it is. I wanted to go down to Wrightsville Beach, or at least as close as I could get, and try to measure the wind myself. And thus began the career, at least the part, of studying hurricanes when they make landfall that part of my career was born. And ever since then, well, most of you know the rest. 28 years later, and here we are. I'm talking to you fine folks here on YouTube and Patreon and Twitter, and even sometimes on Facebook. Anyway, so yes, that was 28 years ago. What's happening right now? Seems like it's been 28 years, I guess, trying to segue into this, since you had power in parts of southeast Texas over here in the wake of Hurricane Barrel. What a big problem that is. Still, almost a million people without power. Let me refresh this to see if it's changed. And it's come down a little bit. Um, I mean, what a big, big problem that has been. You definitely have my sympathy. I know how it is. I've been in, well, hey, Bertha put us without power for a couple of days in southeast North Carolina. And now that I've got a family and a house and a mortgage and all that, I don't like hurricanes hitting me anymore. That's for sure. And why is it so bad down there? Well, let's just take a look back real quick. This is some video from when I was down there in the Galveston area with my colleague, Matt. Let me just refresh this because my internet, you would think with my fast internet that it would be faster, but sometimes maybe it's just Dropbox. Uh, this is what it looked like on the west end of Galveston the day after Barrel went through. Uh, my uh, colleague, Matt, took this video while I was driving. Look at these power lines just laid over the power poles and the power lines. And this was pretty widespread. Not everywhere looked like this. Some areas were fine. The hotel that we stayed in the next night over in Texas City, it was a home to suites. They had power, but blocks away they did not. It was hit and miss, and it's just a big, big disaster covering a large area, densely populated area. Pretty much what you would expect from a Category 1 hur hurricane that uh, brings these kind of conditions to a region. All right, so there, enough of that for now. Nothing to worry about in that realm anytime soon. No hurricanes, no tropical storms, nothing to really track at all. We've got this one little area of disturbed weather that is not going to develop 0% chance. But, as I'll show you here on the radar, unlike 28 years ago when we had Bertha that crawled up the coast right through here, something like that. Uh, nothing. We do have a little tropical disturbance, though, and that's bringing in a few bands of rain and occasional thunderstorms. Very heavy back over the Sand Hills region of the Carolinas, uh, but no tropical systems, even though it does feel very tropical out there. So nothing over the next two days, nothing over the next seven days. Nice and quiet, due in large part to a big plume of dry mid-level air. There's a tropical wave right there. We'll take a look at that in more detail in a moment. But you see all of this sort of fish scale looking, that's what I call it, looks like fish scales, like the side of a fish. Those stratocumulus clouds, um, that's a sign of very stable air. No convection anywhere out in this area to speak of because of the Saharan air layer, S-A-L, a warm somewhat dusty particulate laden air mass that gets ejected off the African continent out into the Atlantic and it puts a literal cap 
on development. You just can't get any convection from that. And it is very typical to see this time of year. So people starting up, I haven't even looked. Hopefully it's not even out there. Well, this probably won't contribute to a big season after all. They blew it. Believe me, we had something like this in June of 2020. We had a huge Saharan outbreak around August 15th, 2005. I remember my colleague Mike Watkins, we didn't tweet about it back then, but he posted about it on Storm 2K. And yes, we do get big Saharan outbreaks even during hyperactive seasons. 2010 had a lot of Saharan dust, and it wasn't until the very end of August that things really cranked up. We ended up 2010 with a very busy season, but no hurricanes hit the United States that year. We've already had one, and that was very impactful, obviously, with barrel. So yeah, African dust, dry air, mainly the suppressed phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation. We're just not in a favorable window right now. So the tropical wave is moving through. I wanted to show you this, uh, affecting parts of the Windward Islands with some showers and thunderstorms. So any recovery efforts down there. You know, this could hinder that, although the fresh tropical rainfall, fresh water, not a bad thing as long as it's not too much. I mean, you need all the fresh water you can get. But we do have that one tropical wave moving through. And back to the big picture, you want to know why it's called a tropical wave? Well, here's your easterlies all through here in intertropical convergence zone. And then there is your wave right there. It looks like a wave in the wind field. Uh, might have another tropical wave over here, pretty weak. And there's some more coming off Africa with all that dust. This is pretty far north, by the way. <clears throat> it's not like the dust layer is way down south towards the ITCZ. Just wanted to point that out in a tropical convergent zone. So things look really good. This is going to be one of the rare moments. You know how some people on social media will post a day 10, 12, 16 GFS or Euro image of a hurricane parked over a major metropolitan area. Usually it's on Facebook, but I see it you know, you, on TikTok, whatever. And there'll be tens of thousands, and in some cases, hundreds of thousands to millions of views, shares, likes, whatever. And everybody shakes their head, why are you doing that? Well, sometimes it's fun to show 16 days out when there's nothing at all to show. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be the antithesis of that scenario. So let's take this out, 16 days, and you'll see there's nothing. Nothing consolidating, no tropical waves coming together, just a big fat Bermuda Azores high, if I can outline it better. Let's use the color blue. Big old Azores Bermuda high connected, subtropical ridge is a more general term. Spread across the Atlantic, and this takes us out to the end of July, roughly, July 28th there. Some energy certainly across the Atlantic. There's one tropical wave over Africa. And yes, once we get towards the end of the month, the favorability window starts to come back again climatologically. We would expect it to. And then even in some of the model guidance, maybe towards the last 10 days of the month, things start to become better you know, for favorability across the basin. But at least the next two weeks, you can see as well as I can, nothing, anything like what we just experienced with barrel. And that's just fine because we're going to have plenty to handle in August, September, and October. So any break we can get to catch our breath will be fantastic and well uh, appreciated. So one thing, speaking of appreciation, I appreciate all the people that have, hey, look, I'm wearing like the exact same shirt. What are the odds? No, I didn't take that picture today. That's from a couple months ago. Uh, just showing you some scale here. Me with our paper tracking map. Huge thank you to everyone that purchased one. I have nine left in my inventory. So if you want one, now's the time to get it. And I've gotten pictures from people. They send them to me via email or they've showed it on Twitter of them filling out the different tracking points. It's a really neat thing. It's an old lost art. My very first paper tracking map was probably from a TV station many, many years ago back in New Bern, North Carolina, probably from Channel 12 up there, the ABC station. Um, but now I produce them, and that's how I started my career, was producing big hurricane awareness campaigns starting with these big tracking maps. I hand drew that myself in Adobe Illustrator, modified it in Photoshop way, way, way back in the late 90s there after the 1996 season. And now they stand the test of time. I produce them every year. 
and uh, you can buy one. 20 bucks plus $3 for me to ship it to you. There's nine left. So if you want one, you better get it now. Otherwise, that is it. They are gone. Also, Quick Dam. I talk about them often and for good reason. Very helpful flood mitigation company based up in Rhode Island. I like this post that they made. I'm going to put this in the description of today's video just for you to reference it. Pretty cool stuff. Can you imagine doing that with sandbags? Nope. No way. No how. So, yep, you can be prepared for all kinds of flood issues, whether it's in your house or mother nature drip, you know, mother nature driven or household, you name it, kids, pets, whatever. And then when the skies open up and you just get too much water, uh, they can help you. And to that end, uh, we have a giveaway. And I finally have chosen somebody. I've been wanting to do this for a while, but the hurricane season got in the way, busy with barrel. And so our first winner of the flood kit, the uh, the bucket there with the flood bags in it, is none other than our friend Adrian here. I'm going to send this down, get his address and whatnot. And I'll send Adrian and his family there in southeast Florida. They could definitely use this product that I'm going to send them, or Quick Dams will send them out. And that's our first winner. Um, so we'll be doing this a couple of times a month over the next few months. The next kit that we will give away, and I'll choose somebody generally at random. I'm also looking for people that I think could really use it. I mean, I don't want to accidentally send something to somebody in San Diego, <laughs> you know, like where it hardly ever does anything. So the next kit we're going to do is the indoor leak kit, which could come in handy even in San Diego, so you never know. Uh, but yeah, maybe somebody in the desert southwest or out in California that has to deal with the atmospheric rivers. Just kind of looking back through my Twitter, through our social media as a whole, at who could benefit from something like this, and we'll give these away over the next several months. But the first recipient is our good friend here, Adrian, and uh, his family down in Southeast Florida. So congrats, Adrian. I'll get in touch with you over a direct message and let you know, and uh, we'll send it out as soon as we can from, from Pawtucket, Rhode Island. All right? So it's good to have these updates that are pretty calm and not much to worry about. All that Saharan dust and everything else, just a nice down period. That being the case, tomorrow through Tuesday, no mark. I'm gone. I'm doing stuff. Family, preparation, little work mixed in. I still have a lot to do in this office here to reorganize everything from our hail project work, which took most of the spring, getting everything organized, getting all my equipment back from FedEx, uh, from Houston, all the cameras we shipped out. And then on Monday... I'm flying down to the Cayman Islands to deliver a couple of GoPro systems and a Kestrel drop sensor. I don't have one nearby, but that looks like a little teardrop. Uh, so that they can have some tools during the next hurricane encounter that they have. And um, so, yeah, I'm flying down Monday. I'll be meeting with different people in the government, in the weather service, and through the Internet anyway, my good friend Adam McDoom. And I've asked him, yes, that's his real last name. I'll prove it. I'll show you some video from down there. Hey, we'll also talk about their experiences with Beryl, a pretty close call. They were on the north side of that circulation. So Mark's going to the Cayman Islands just for one night. And yes, it is for all work. Believe me. And I get a lot of people that say, oh, you get to travel all these places. You must have such a great time. I take the family back to these places later, like years later, when I can enjoy it, when there's not a hurricane coming or there's not work to do. So yes, very excited to go to the Cayman Islands meet with Adam and other people, and uh, get them more prepared for hurricane season, at least from a technological perspective, to document what happens. You know, we need that. So I'm excited about that. So I'll be back Tuesday afternoon, so the next update will be Wednesday morning. So don't be worrying about, what happened? Where's Mark? It's been too many days. Anytime I disappear for a few days, and I appreciate it, people start to worry. It's okay. I'm going to take a few days off and work and go to the Cayman Islands, then I'll be back. All right, have a good uh, rest of your weekend. I guess it's Friday, it's already the weekend. The rest of your Friday and the weekend, have a good set of all of that. And I will try to do the same. From all of us at Hurricane Track, I'm Mark Sato signing off until Wednesday. I'll talk to you next week.